Hello everyone and welcome to our great big outdoor quarry studio which is in the Ribble Valley just outside Clitheroe in Lancashire. But we're not looking at what these quarries produce for the people and industries of this area but what they contribute to the wildlife and biodiversity. If you talk to people who know quarries they'll tell you that quarries are often better than many nature reserves. Well I've spent the day here, I've met some fascinating people so let's have a look back and see what I've discovered. Sam Ruthell is currently my favourite man in Lancashire because we've been standing here for what, about five minutes? And he went, Kate, there's a peregrine up on that cliff. I can't believe you managed to spot it. It was extraordinary. Well, it's just a good eye. It, it, is, a, it is a good <laughs> eye. It is a good eye. I mean, I know that peregrines like to hang out in quarries like this, but just to see one like that was amazing. When did you first see your first peregrine here? Um, well, I've been here about 10 years, uh, probably in the first fortnight of starting really? here. Yeah, I saw it do its first kill down in the, the quarry bottom there. How amazing. So have you got really into wildlife since you've been working here? Uh, uh, yeah, more, definitely more so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's lots going on. I mean, there's uh, ravens nesting up there, not far from uh, where Peregrine is. Um, we've also have an oyster catcher down on the quarry floor there with some eggs at the moment. So really? We'll, oh, I'd love to We'll go and have a something. look at them, eh? That would be so, great. And yeah. what about mammals? Any, any Anything else that you Yeah, we've, um, we've uh, badgers, with two badger sets, uh, foxes. Uh, deer, you see deer early in the morning, you know. Sounds so, like it's sort of like a Disney film. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And do you think everybody's a bit like you, that they, they really appreciate having the wildlife around? Yeah, you? definitely. I think it's part of being a quarryman is that. I think if you're, you know, you're, you're with it every day. You're, you're, you're with them every day, aren't you? So it's... But it is so surprising. You'd think that no bird or animal or plant would want to exist here. Oh, not at all, no. It's, it, it's, I think they feel more safe. Well, you promised me that oyster catcher, so can Absolutely, yeah. We'll go and have a look, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, I'm following you. Which right, way? Right, this way. way. Oh, look at her. Can you see down there? There's oh, three. yeah. Three. There's three. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. Isn't that astonishing? <laughs> oh, oh, that was just lovely. I, I just, I would never have thought that a bee colony could thrive at the edge of a working quarry. Well, neither did I really when I started them here, uh, but surprisingly, they've done really, really well. The air quality around here appears to be fabulous. Uh, you can see from the, the flora and the foliage around here that, uh, you know, everything looks nice. The insect life is so varied around here and the bees have settled in well uh, along with the other insects here and they're thriving. But is there enough food to sustain them throughout a year? Well there appears to be because they're filling up the, uh, the supers with honey and they must be getting it from somewhere. Uh, there's lots of wild strawberry about. There's an amazing number of wildflowers around in that quarry. And of course the other thing that's really important is that honeybees are having a terribly hard time at the moment. Yes they are and surprisingly my colony seem to have done all right. I don't seem to have been affected too much with the losses that other people have suffered. So do you think perhaps the long-term future and health of the honeybee could be to keep them in quarries from now on. Not in this one, because this is my place. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look at your honey. Okay. <laughs> look at them, aren't they just magnificent things? They're just... Now, great. this is only half full, but if you feel the weight of that, if you want to hold that... Wow. There's about a, a pound and a half. There, yeah, there? there's about a pound and a half on there already, oh, and the that's... Smell you can on. smell it. Oh, the nectar is... wonderful. This has gradually been evaporated. Yeah, Hello everyone. Hello. Hi, you must be Phil. I am. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Look at this. This is absolutely incredible, it's Phil. It's just a fantastic place. It's just got okay, loads of different habitats. I mean, it was quarried until about eight, nine years ago. And yet now we've got woodland, we've got meadow, we've got a pond down there. And it's just a great place. What's so fantastic is it really connects them with the wildlife that is literally on their doorstep. Absolutely. And as, as someone who is, is you know, part of the Lancashire Wildlife Trust, um, is there a lot of wildlife here? I mean, is this a very rich area? Generally, yes, it is. We've got limestone grassland, which has got some of its own peculiar species, but we've got woodland, we've got water, the river's just nearby. So we've got just great habitat around, which it means there's all sorts of wildlife in this area. I think we'd better stop talking and get bug hunting. What have you found? Oh, look at right that! Go. They're eggs, they're fantastic. 
At a rock quarry like this one, the biodiversity potential is very different from, say, a sand and gravel quarry. So to find out what's being achieved at a sand and gravel site, we're going to visit Lafarge Aggregates at Panshanger Park in Hertfordshire. Well, this, this is a river Mimram, which really runs right through the middle of the Panshanger Quarry. Um, it's well known for its brown trout. In fact, it's probably one of a very few chalk streams that's still left in Hertfordshire. Apart from brown trout, we have got grayling in here. Um, we do quite a lot of management on the river uh, with the help of the Environment Agency um, as we've put logs in here to try and speed the flow up in places and also create bays in other places. This was the first lake, again, that we'd quarried. And this has probably been restored about six and a half years. Um, in the winter time, apart from the swans and coot and moorhen and Canada geese that we have on this site, we have a lot of overwintering duck. Uh, there's quite a lot of pochard, mallard, gandering. There, is, there are a lot of duck that come here in the winter time. Well, this is the last area to be restored. It's now going into a five year aftercare and it will be put in conservation cropping for different species, for birds, butterflies, and such like. The area you can see over there in the green is an area that we put in last year, which is American sweet clover. I think, really, I think as a gravel operators, I don't think anybody realizes how much land management we do. And I know this estate was um, laid out by Repton and Capability Brown, but I think if we come back today, you wouldn't be disappointed on what we've done. Now, Bernie Higgins is employed by Tarmac as a biodiversity officer. Is that just a box ticking exercise by Tarmac, do you think? Definitely not. Um, during 2003, the company decided that um, they would put in or install biodiversity plans at all of their sites, which is around about 120 sites in this country. And what's that actually mean? That means that we've put in plans at these sites where we initially got um, ecologists in to do the surveys and work out a draft plan for each quarry. So each quarry site is site specific. And that means that we not only uh, find out what biodiversity we have there, it means that we then manage it and we also enhance it. In Northumberland, for instance, we've got the Northumberland Wild Trust accreditation or the benchmark on seven of our sites up there. And this is what we intend to extend throughout the rest of the country as time goes on. Now John Drayton here joined Semex UK back in 1970 as a carpenter, but we're not going to be talking about carpentry, are we? No, we're certainly not. Well, so far we have been concentrating on the wildlife that inhabits quarries today. But, of course, quarrying uncovers the prehistoric world and we're sitting on a bench made entirely out of fossils. And it's these fossils that got you from carpentry to geology in one fell swoop, John. Yes, so I uh, went, it was actually the quarry manager, and the Open University come in, so visitors all the while, and they found a shark's tooth with me. And this is a shark's tooth, <gasps> which I found, which is a hundred million years old. Incredible. So once you found this, were you just looking out for fossils all I the time? I just then went and looked out and started researching, started asking all the geologists that come in what the different things. And you've got some astonishing things here. Talk me through some of these. And then we've got this, which is an ammonite. I've got That's ammonites beautiful. of all sizes. What's this curious looking this thing This curious here? thing is a piece of coprolite. It's a phosphatic nodule, right. which was in the seabed 100 million years ago, dinosaurs dung. <gasps> You're yeah, kidding! No, it's a hundred That's a piece years of there. dinosaur poo. Yeah, and I go to do a lot of talks for these for the schools, and as soon as I take it in the school, the kiddies get hold of it, smell it, and say, <laughs> and I say, don't worry, I washed it before I come out, but it's a hundred million years old. That's absolutely incredible. Well, that's it from Clitheroe, but before I go, I'd like to leave you with just one little nugget of information. Did you realise that if you added together all the nature reserves created by quarrying, you'd have what amounts to a national park? Now, the MPA have realised that there's massive potential in this area, and they've put together an action plan to really make the best of this largely unrecognised asset. So watch this space.